because genetics is expanding so fast and there's the, the frontiers are just so open that you can make it into what you want. And if you're able to do that, then you can do whatever else you want in addition. And I think that allows then for um, people to spend time with their families or to pursue other interests like writing or, or other hobbies. But when you have this kind of a background in genetics, what you write, you know, is, is rooted in the facts or the standard of care. And um, it's just that much easier for me, I think, to write that um, than someone without a genetics background. I hope it makes an impact by taking genetics or subjects in science and medicine and putting them in plain language and making it easy for many, many people to have um, a, a working knowledge of science and medicine and kind of what they, they need to do or need to know for their own health, their own bodies. As I started to learn more about different genetics careers, the one thing that really struck me was in looking through a lot of the um, different textbooks that were out there about genetics and biology and things like that, you'd always see really cool photos in there and really cool diagrams. Um, and I kind of, it just kind of clicked that one day I said, well, you kind of have to know how to, you have to understand the biology behind it to actually be able to draw a picture of it or take a photo that actually shows something that is meaningful to people. So um, I decided that maybe that'd be a nice place to kind of pursue what I wanted to do. And I stuck to a pretty traditional science path in terms of my education, but the artistic background and training that I had really led to a lot of opportunities that maybe I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't have that background. It kind of helped my resume or my application stand out a little bit more. And I contacted a lab at um, the Children's Memorial Institute of Education and Research. And there was a research lab there that was working on neural tube formation, so the actual formation of like the spine around your spinal cord, um, and any genetic causes into spina bifida, which is where it doesn't close properly. One of the projects that they were talking about is actually taking photos of the mouse embryos because really you learn a lot more from a photo of what's going on than just looking at a test tube or looking at data out of a computer. And when I started to explain to them, oh, well, I actually have a history of professional photography training and I've done a lot of photography work as well as artwork, um, they actually asked me to join their team right away. I, I like to make jewelry, I make it professionally, so even just like the simple shape of a DNA helix can be really, really elegant. And so I've actually used those kinds of shapes in trying to make different necklaces out of beads that are maybe a little bit more interesting than just a flat string of something. Um, and at the same time, it kind of pulls in a very personal nature into the jewelry because then it's actually something that's real in the world and not just some made up design. So these are just a few of the career options within the field of genetics. As medicine and computers continue to advance, the field of genetics will continue to expand, and you can be a part of it. For more information about the field of genetics, or career options, consider job shadowing, or ask your teacher to help you find a mentor. Also, don't forget to check the back page of the booklet that goes along with this video for a number of great websites and other suggestions on how to prepare for a career in genetics.